Cool. Well, what do you guys want to talk about today? One of the suggestions I had was there's this theme that repeats with me and it's reduce and simplify. And so I wanted to talk about when you guys get new tools, do you keep the old tools and the old supplies or do you get rid of them? Because I am I'm in this mode of always just mm. trying to get rid of stuff. I have I have too much stuff and I need to get rid of it. So I, I like that idea because I just did that in the all morning. I completely like <laughs> oh, yeah. disregarded my to-do list and I just reset because my drawers collapsed. So I had to like redo the drawers. They collapsed after like five years being filled with tools. <laughs> but mm. my idea, I'll give you guys my idea, is um I thought we could talk about making signs. Because mm. I've been making a lot of signs lately. So just talking because I know you guys are both graphic designers, so and so am I. So I thought it'd be cool to talk about letters, letter forms, and just getting into sign making. And, I like that. You know, how that's actually a fast and easy business for a lot of people to get into. Hmm. I had a couple of things. Uh, one was somebody was asking me today, like what, as they wanted to get into this, like making content, they were asking what would be the most profitable part of it. You know, like podcast or videos or affiliate stuff or kind of like where their focus should be. Mm hmm. So that could be interesting. And then the other thing was, um, like, when do you give up on a small space? Which is kind of like what you're talking about, David. <laughs> kind of the, uh, the other end of that. Like, how far can you push a small room until you just um, have to give up and get something bigger? Right. Yeah, right. I have a really good channel for that. It's jimmyderesta.com. <laughs> <Thanks. laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, so what are you guys feeling? Uh, the Simplify thing's cool. That's, I mean, it kind of works into all of it. Uh, I like the simplify one. That, that's cool too. All right, then that's that's you it. Win. Then I win. <laughs> all right, <Whoop. laughs> all right, you win. All right, let's go home. Ready? <laughs> yeah. All right, everybody, welcome to episode twenty-seven of Making It. I'm Bob Claggett here with David Picciuto and Jimmy Duresta. Guys, hey, how's it going? How you doing? I'm good. Doing very well. Um, as we get going, I want to thank our sponsor, Inventables. Uh, they've been sponsoring us all this last month, which is awesome. Uh, they've got the X-Carve, the 3D carving machine, um, which is a, a great, great machine. And it's kind of, it's pretty low cost for, as an entryway into CNC. Like there's a lot of CNCs that are really expensive and, you know, there's ones that are all different sizes, really big, really small. The X-Carve is a great way to get into it. I think at a really reasonable price. Part of that is because you put the machine together yourself, but it's not actually hard. It's just work. <laughs> That's my opinion. It's just work. It's not actually hard to do. I've put a couple of them together now, and I, the second one, the one I did recently, actually went together really fast compared to what I'd done in the past because I already kind of knew what was coming. Um, so I think if you can, you know, like watch the videos and have a little familiarity with it, it's pretty quick. So. Anyway, thanks to uh, Inventables for sponsoring this one. Go check them out at Inventables.com. And uh, if you guys like the show and you want to help us uh, get noticed, get in front of more ears, go to iTunes and leave us a rating and a review. Somehow that helps. I still am not really clear <laughs> why that helps a lot, but apparently it does. So, uh, yeah, do that for us. We'd appreciate it. So what's everybody working on? Uh, I am. Um, uh, I just finished, I'm so excited, I just finished uh, a video. I just started the video series exclusively for Core 77, and hopefully my first video will go up today. It's that really thick oak uh, dovetail bench that I made. So I just finished that video last night, and I'm excited about that. And then I immediately, well, actually yesterday morning, I started my, my machinist tool draw, which is on my Instagram. And um, so that's uh, up and coming. That's going to be for uh, my channel. And that's also going to be featured in the make book that we're working on. So that's the machinist draw, which I began. And then I finished up that dovetail bench, uh, which I'm excited about. It's kind of out, outside of my comfort zone, but I was real happy with the results. Yeah, it looks great from yeah. the Instagram stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that, that piece of oak I got at the sawmill about two years ago. And, I, and the interesting thing about my videos for Core is they're all going to have a voiceover. So it's going to be like the director's cut on a DVD. <laughs> so I, I edit the video straight away. And then I'll I go back and I do I do a voiceover over them, kind of like the way Frank Hallworth does. Or uh, so um, if you turn the sound off, it'll be exactly like my other stuff. But you could turn the sound up and you could hear me talking about what's the details that you see on screen. Hmm. So it's going to be uh, that's and then also all my videos that I'll do for them once per month will be all furniture design. So oh, it forces cool. me also to get outside my comfort zone and stop making axes. 
weapons. I could make like cool, sexy furniture. So now, is that it, it, since it's focused on furniture? Is that the case where like whether you need to make furniture for a client or not, you're just going to make a piece of furniture to make that video? Is that the that's idea? It. Nice. Yeah, that's it. So um, then I'm, I, I'll probably take it more like that, and then just make whatever I want. It'll be just sort of blue sky free thinking, and and each one of those pieces will likely be available. So I'll be able to to sell those pieces one at a time. Nice. Yeah, I've been. I'm a big fan of Core seventy seven. I follow them on on Twitter and and uh, their RSS feeds. Just really, really good stuff. Like them and yeah, Design stuff. Milk. I, yeah, I just use I just use the, those types of websites for inspiration and design ideas all the time so it's cool that you're working with them yeah. thank you yeah they, they wrote to me they're, they're somehow affiliated with the school of visual arts i don't know exactly but um once they realized i was too i spoke to my friend there rain who got in touch with me he's one of the editors a super nice guy and he's super supportive of all of us he actually knows all you guys as well nice so it's it's i'm looking forward to a good relationship with them awesome cool nice i don't have a whole lot going on i'm actually taking off right right after this recording to go hang out at uh, on the lake for the 4th of July weekend. So nice. I was going to film a quick tip video today, but I decided, no, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, gonna to save that for when I get back. So I don't have anything for you today. Nice. That's pretty lazy. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> no, it is. It, it actually is. It's like, I, you know, vacation starts tomorrow. So why not extend it one yeah. day, you know? Yeah, it started today. Nothing wrong with that. Well, I'm kind of in the same boat as I was last week where I'm, I've am i done some of the reorganization stuff uh, in my shop that I was talking about. And I got my dust collector actually just opened the box today and started kind of pulling the pieces out. And I actually figured out where to put everything so I don't, I don't really have to move a bunch of stuff around, hmm. which is pretty cool. Um, a little change, but you know, it's not like I'm going to have to really gut anything. So here's, and I also finished the shelf that I was talking about last week. So here's the interesting thing that I ran into this week. And I'm sure somebody will have an idea who's listening. So my original idea was to get the X carve, the big CNC, right? It's a meter square. It's huge. And to mount it on the wall. And the idea was to run it on the wall. Yeah. And I talked to the engineer there and he said, yeah, it should be able to work. You know, we've never tried it, but it should. And, it's not made for that, so I fully understand that they're not responsible for, you know, for making it run vertically. But so we thought we'd give it a shot. So I put some French cleats on the wall, put them under the X carve. It worked perfectly. I hung it up there; it was super stable, and it didn't have enough power. the The motors are NEMA twenty threes, I think, and it didn't have enough power to move the gantry, which I kind of expected. So I ran a line, a rope up from the gantry. Um, up to the ceiling through an eye and then counterweighted it. I met, you know, weighed, weighed the thing and then counterweighted it. So theoretically, it shouldn't have to work as hard as otherwise. Right. And I got it weighted to where it would actually go up and I, I could get the thing to move vertically. And I was like, oh, super excited. And then I tried to move it down and it wouldn't move down because, you know, that's <laughs> yeah, cool weight. Yeah, the weight's working against it the other direction. And I couldn't, I tried bungee to try to like change the amount of you know tension on it where it was. And I tried all this different stuff. And I eventually got to, well, what if I got bigger motors? Like this is an, an entirely different machine at that point, you know? So I'm like, I find these, these the next size motors. They're NEMA 34s, I think. Oh. And so instead of pulling 200 some odd pounds the, the, from a torque perspective, these pull like 1,200 pounds. So I'm thinking, surely that's strong enough. That's got to be strong enough. I can only find these on eBay. They're like $120 a piece. And I'm like, well, I really only need one to run, you know, just to run vertically. The other motors can go the other directions. And so then I start looking at them. I'm just about to order on eBay. And I'm like, oh, I should check and see how much power they take. Well, it turns out they draw five amps instead of like one and a half amps or whatever it is which means you have to change out the motor shield, which means you have to change out the power mm-hmm. supply and the Arduino. So basically you gut all the electronics and it's like five or $600 later and then you can maybe <laughs> run it vertically. Yeah. I, I might have a solve for you. Really? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's a whole... <laughs> it would work, but only only someone you know like you can electrically engineer it. Put the thing on a... 
on a rotisserie on the wall. And every time it has to go in the direction, have the whole machine spin in the direction of down. So it's always... <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. amazing. All right. That would make some so great videos. So it's constantly videos. spinning and rotating to counteract <laughs> gravity. Huh. And then I have, a, I have an even better idea. Okay. Just a bigger table put in the backyard under the shed. <laughs> That's, yeah. Actually, I, <laughs> I'm joking. I literally <laughs> tried to figure out for a little while how to lift it, how to mount it upside down on the ceiling to make it work <laughs> that way. And then I tried to figure out how to mount it, hang it from the ceiling to where I could have a, a winch system that would lower it down. It, but it would have to lower four points at the same time. And, you know, just everything I came up with, there was always like some little, ah, eh, that would be really hard to work around. At, at what point did you say to yourself, I am over engineering this? The entire yeah. time. But at the same time, I was trying really hard to find a way to run this thing without taking up footprint. Yeah. And so I spent an entire weekend experimenting. I got, in. I got another solve for you. You just, you just <laughs> listening to you. I got another one. Okay, you want to hear yeah. this one? Yeah. All right. So you get like steel rods, like square two. Say like if I was doing it, I'd probably use like uh, steel half by one inch thick and drill a hole at each end. Say let's just say the steel is, I don't know, three feet long or oh, five feet long. So it hangs from the ceiling, comes down from the ceiling five feet. So it'll be, let's just assume, you know, just above, just below eye height like under your chin, so you could set it up. And then, so now it's, it's on four. Can you guys see my fingers? I'm putting four <laughs> fingers down. And then, so it's rigidly held on four vertical steel rods. And okay. it, it's on pivot pins, and it's on pivot pins on the ceiling too. So then when you move it, it's, you're basically making it into a parallelogram. So oh, parallelograms okay. up against the ceiling, and then swings parallelogram mm. straight down. So this way, you only have one pulley, one cable, and you pull it in the, you know, the appropriate space on one of those points that'll pull it up. But then it will literally parallelogram up to the ceiling and then parallelogram down yeah. to work level. Oh, I like that. So that's an idea. So if you have it on stiff rods, it's, it's, uh, it's stronger. It's more uh, easily mecha mechanized to go up and down than, than opposed to having it on like cables. And then when it comes down, presumably it, it's not going to wobble and you know, jiggle around if it was on cables. It would be on these steel four things. Yeah. So you'd have to make a good steel bracket on the ceiling. So those pivot on that with like brass washers and so on. But just a thought. Hmm. Are there? Well, I ended up figuring out how to mount it and move it without it being in the way. So. Oh. Yeah. I was, was going to ask, like, are there any flat surfaces that are used as like a bench top or a table where you could like have that bench top? hinge up and then the cnc is underneath that and then when the cnc is not in use the table hinges back down and and becomes a bench again i kind of ended up doing the opposite of that whereas like my normal work table i put the cnc on it mm -hmm. up to one edge and then hinge the machine on the tabletop oh, so the machine yeah, yeah. now stands up against the wall and Out there's the an way. offset yeah. yeah and the table was actually the right distance from the wall so that the height of the cnc when it's in its normal configuration, that height is the same as the distance the table from the wall. So actually nothing had to move. You know, nothing is in my way any more than it was mm -hmm. before. Um, and the electronics move with it and stuff like that. So it worked out all right. But, you know, I spent a lot of time trying to make it cooler. <laughs> well, you know, the, what, what I loved about those pictures that you, that you said this was um, just the idea of putting a CNC flat on a wall, I think, is, is definitely something people are going to start to do. You yes, because so, it's the bigger you get, the more floor space you need, and the floor space is something that nobody has, and it's sort of it. it uh, it's difficult. I know my little shop downstairs. Uh, we're putting together my square yard machine right now, or it's one meter by one meter, and I got nowhere to put it. Yeah. Every time we're done, we got to like take it off the table and lean it on the wall. So I mean, that's probably what's going to have to happen for a little while until I make a dedicated space for it. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's it's just it. It's nice to say, oh, give me the big one. I want to use the big one. But now all of a sudden it's, where, it's where is it going to go? Yeah. And I did some research. There are, you know, several CNC machines that will run vertically. And it's really just about the motors being powerful enough to, to handle, to hold them and to start the motion. Like once, it, once I could get them moving up, get the gantry moving up in a vertical orientation, it would move fine. You know, so it's not a problem of any of the machine or anything like that. It's just the voltage draw of that initial, the motor's got to start pushing 10 pounds of metal up or mm -hmm. whatever that is. Immediately, you know? yeah. And so if you can get over that initial draw, I think it's totally reasonable to do it. Um, but 
anyway. I would still want to see the machine just like rotate on the wall to every time. Yeah. Put the uh, put the gantry at east west every time like the heavy gantry that has to move is at is at <laughs> east west as opposed to north south. So, it definitely would, would not save space. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you just have a giant spinning table in your in the middle <laughs> of your shop. <laughs> you saw dust would be flying everywhere, not just down. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> so anyway, that's that's what I'm that's what I've been working on. I yeah. like it. I finally like it. finally passed that. And uh, so, David, talk a little bit more about your subject. Sure. Um, so since you won, yeah, since I won, <laughs> Pachuto won, Duresta Claggett zero. <laughs> um, yeah. So this, like, like I said earlier, the recurring theme of my life is reduce and simplify. Right. I only have so much space. I can't keep filling up with new tools and more wood and all that. So, um, and I'm not doing this just with tools. Like even in just junk in general I need, I need to get less of I need you to mentioned just, that about guitars not too long ago too. I, I yeah yeah and i've i actually gotten rid of some guitars recently you can only play one at a time and now i'm making two more so i i got rid of two guitars and i'm making <laughs> oh, two more um but maybe we'll, we'll see what happens with them though um so it's i, I today in the mail uh arrived the new festool vacuum or shop back or whatever whatever they call oh, cool. it and um so that's going to get rid of my current shop back and my cyclone those things they take up too much room they're too loud i, I gotta get rid of them um you know i've been i just i had a couple visitors over some some followers and uh, while they're here i was like hey do you want my biscuit joiner and do you want my drill press so these these are things i don't have anymore and so they they just left to drop off some you know, they, they brought me like a six pack to say, you know, thanks for the videos. And I gave them a whole bunch of tools to take away. And they were like, <laughs> nice. away. I'm like, these are just taking, this is just taking up space. I don't, it helps me to get rid of this so I can make room for these other things. And well, that's, that's the, the pay, the pay the tool forward game yeah, that I started. Yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, Jimmy and I kind of work in like, we have a different philosophy about our workshop. Jimmy likes it kind of like, I don't know if messy is the right word, but everything is scattered everywhere, and you know right where it's at. Yeah, it's a it's a, it's a total disaster. <laughs> I like I like things to be in its place and and clean because when I go down into my shop, it's I I feel welcome there. I I feel like there's nothing in the way. There's no distractions. I can do what I want to do, and that involves me getting rid of a bunch of stuff that I don't need anymore. So. No, it's it's it, it is a timely topic for me too because this yesterday morning I started this uh, this uh, I'll call it a card catalog for lack of a better description, which is uh, this set of drawers I'm making and there's going to be fifty drawers. Uh, most of them are uh, f- six inches wide by four inches high, and the others are twelve inches wide by four inches high. And uh, so I needed to set up my dado saw, and since I haven't used it since I made the dickel boxes about five months ago. Everything that's added circulation in the shop just gets piled on that saw. So the saw, it was just covered. It would look like a giant mound of just trash, garbage, YouTube projects. And uh, so yesterday morning, I had to go in there. I consolidated. It literally became like like the pile of laundry that you never do, that you just keep throwing <laughs> things on. And it was just all shop stuff, extension cords. You know, My treasure chest from the video was on there because we opened it up to get money out for lunch. <laughs> So everything was just piled on it. So I, I organized all of that to get at the saw. So when you see this video, you'll notice or all around that it's relatively clean. And I had to get rid of stuff. I'm like, I just have no more room. So I just put stuff on the sidewalk. I mean, nothing of any really value. And then so this morning I had to confront a different issue. Uh, I had to use something. I had to make room in the front room. So to make room in the front room, I had to move these big steel drawers that, that I salvaged from from some of my friend's shop clean out. And it was finally time for me to put them in place of the drawers under my desk because last week they all collapsed. Because after eight years of just filling them with screwdrivers and pliers, they just finally gave out. Because I made them with bad extensions. And the extensions just kind of gave way and broke out. And the drawer, one of the main drawers fell out. So I just said, this thing is over. It's the second repair. So this morning I cleaned out under my table. I got rid of the drawers that you often see me pull open and take tools out. And underneath, they have these vintage steel drawers, which aren't going to give way because I put them on the bottom, put a shelf across the top of them. And so now they're not necessarily mounted hanging. They're just like placed on the shelf underneath my table. 
And then underneath there, I had tools. I, I was given brand new tools uh, from HGTV a couple of years ago to do a blog or pod review thing, and I never did it. I just, and they were Milwaukee tools, brand new Milwaukee tools, uh, the twelve volt battery system. And I used them literally for a week, and the battery stopped taking a charge. And so they're brand new. I just put them on the sidewalk, and hmm. I put a, I put two pa- uh, cordless drills on the sidewalk with the chargers and everything. All this stuff was stowed under the table. And uh, it's nothing like super cool. I mean, the right person could take them and turn them into a you know a good useful tool if they go and buy the right battery and everything. And uh, a funny thing was, my friend was walking by and he recognized that they were mine. And he he wrote me a note when I was getting lunch and he said he goes, "Hey, some of your tools are on the sidewalk. Should I put them down in the in the gate? The gate is open." And I said, "No, no, no. I'm throwing those away. I don't want this." <laughs> hmm. So, I mean, I always put good things on the sidewalk. If I don't have anybody right here to hand them to, I just put them on the sidewalk. And I know someone like me is going to come by and take them and get good use out of them. <laughs> so, hmm. so that's that's my last two days is just uh, downsizing and getting rid of stuff and moving things around just to try and make the space more efficient. I, I just get so in a rut where it's like, you know what, if there's a footpath to the saw, a footpath to the bandsaw, a footpath to the material, I'm happy. <laughs> you know, but then every once in a while, I have to really, I need the space. I need the extra space to, you know, to store projects while they're in process. And yeah, it's, it's a real pain in the butt. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. Like I was thinking about um, the way I react to my space being messy and it's almost like a claustro. I'm not claustrophobic, but it when the space is messy, not full, but messy, I feel claustrophobic about it. And I maybe claustrophobic is the wrong word, but I feel like a stress about when I walk in there and this tool is covered with scraps and this tool is covered with scraps and I and I have to do work before I can do work. Right? I have mm-hmm. to like clean up this thing before I can even use the tool. That makes me feel blech about the, being in there, and and that happens so quickly in a small space because you know you just don't have room to like discard the scraps from something while you're working on something they have to go somewhere and so i'm in the position where i have these buckets like two or three five gallon buckets that are just full of offcuts of things and they kind of float around on the floor and they're always in my way and i'm always kicking them but i'm like well you know it's like this these are all hardwood offcuts like i don't want to wait 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 you're kicking the bucket <laughs> over and over and over. <laughs> I have it too. I just, I, I cut all those dovetails out of this bench, which you'll see. And I saved them. I'm like, you know, I don't know. Sometimes people come to my shop and they're like, I just want anything. So I give them a scrap of wood from a video. Yeah. So I have this bucket and it's just, it's just filled with all the scraps, all the dovetails I cut out. <laughs> I have the other buckets just filled with little hardwoods. And like me and Dave, like, oh, they are all going to be knife handles. Everything's going to be a knife handle <laughs> when it's under five inches. I yeah. see. I, I think nice everything things. is going to be a pen. Like, oh, this piece of ebony. Yeah. This could be a pen, and then yeah. it ends up as firewood. Actually, yeah. <laughs> well, that's kind of what fish. my buckets are for. They're like a holding cell for firewood. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it goes there to wait. If I don't use it for six months, then I I burn it all. But so, like, I'm not as like you were talking about getting rid of things to simplify. My position is is not that I want to just get rid of tools to have more room or to have less stuff around, but I want to be able to efficiently use the space that I have the most, you know. And if that means simplifying to get rid of like extra lumber because it's in the way, it's stopping me from getting to the tools, then yeah. But no, I, it, I've, it I've also never clears had, my head. Too, I've never like, had the burden to like I need to get rid of tools because I don't know. I see so many opportunity in the tools, you know. Well, I mean, I, I have been fortunate enough to be, I, I've been given a lot of tools from the TV stuff, you know, every time. And it's not me personally. They just, you know, there's some marketing middle person gives the production company a bunch of stuff because there's something that's going to eventually be in front of everyone's eyeballs. And uh, so they're not giving them to me. They're giving them to the production company. And then when the show's down, they just go, we're not going to use them. You just keep them. Mm-hmm. And so I've been fortunate enough to have like quadruples of certain things. I mean, I actually have table saws. I have like a, a cabinet saw, table saw. Frank Hallworth's got two set up beautifully. I don't have the space to set them up that way. I have one, two, three, four. I have five cabinet saws. Wow. And I only bought two of them. Three of them were given. So um, I have a Sears one. I have two from Delta. And uh, so just uh, those aren't the type of things you could just hand to somebody when they visit. You know, unfortunately, it's kind of these yeah. set. And they're all in storage. So they're, when I have my dream space set up, I'll have... I'll have five table saws next to one another. Everyone's going to have a different curved blade on it. <laughs> nice. 
I'm gonna win the table saw race. <laughs> See, I, I have this this thing in my head where I'm like, okay, if I don't use this thing in over a year, it's got to go because it's it's really it's space, a smart thing. Space is more valuable than the tool to me. Like my my miter saw, I don't use my miter saw anymore, and the only reason I'm hanging on to it is because I need to redo the trim in this office. As soon as this trim is done. That miter saw is gone. I have a crosscut sled on my table saw, uh, so all everything that I can do on the miter saw, I can do on that uh, with that crosscut sled. Hmm. And um, my biscuit joiner, you know, I haven't used that thing in over a year, and I just got that Domino a few months ago. I'm never going to use that thing again, and so give it away. So you, those are two examples of tools that where you have two things c- that could basically do the same function. Yeah. Then that totally makes sense to me. Like I'm totally on board with that. Are there things that you want to get rid of that are single function? Like, like you said, drill press. Was that because you had two drill presses? I did. I had a tabletop drill press and a floor standing okay. drill press, and I had to get rid of one. I, so there are, are there any tools that you have one of that? That's the only thing that'll do that job, but it's just not valuable enough for you to hang on to. Uh, the, yeah. There. I mean, there's a couple. Not 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 big tools, but a couple like um, what do you call that thing that puts the uh, the glue. St- <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> it, it puts the staple into the picture frame to hold the back on. I have a special tool that's just for that. Oh, a, gla- a glazing, a glazing yeah. stapler. I don't use that thing anymore. That thing's got to go, right? I, it's even a when stapler I, for glazing points. Is yeah, and even when I do make picture frames, I don't use that. I actually use um, little uh, pins or, or, or little nails. It works better that way. And so just little things like that. And I, I have this like. If I got hit by a bus today and somebody had to come in and clean up my stuff, I don't want them to be left with this mess of what is all this crap that this person has, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm trying to like I have that mindset if I got hit by a bus, don't leave somebody else a big mess. I don't I, care about any of that. I, I feel like that's <laughs> inevitable, honestly. I mean, I you know, like I don't know. I there's no way that I can simple well i'm not saying there's no way with knowing my personality it's very unlikely that i could ever simplify the stuff that i have to a point to where when i'm gone somebody would know what to do with it all yeah (laughs) i don't know if i said that right but i just have too many interests i have too many you know like just things that and it could all burn and i would be perfectly fine it's stuff i don't care about the fact that it's stuff my point is like i i really have so many interests that it's just like I'm interested in that thing and I'm going to do that for a while and then I'm interested in this thing I'm going to do that for a while and it's not that I'm really ever leaving this stuff behind and I'm never going to come back to it it's just you know I've got all this in this room right now I've got all this music equipment that I don't really play on on a regular basis but I do play it and then I'm going to get rid of it just because I haven't used it in six months this is just purely my personality and so I can't imagine how far I would have to simplify my interests and the way that I actually do those interests to make it so that somebody could come along after I'm gone and yep. you know and right, easily clean it out. But right next to me is a closet and it's full of CDs and cassettes that I haven't touched in years. Everything that I ever want to listen to has been converted to yeah. An MP3 file. There's no reason for me to have that. That that's got to go. You know, it's it's things like that. Yeah. I I moved my box of CDs that I've had since the CDs were invented a thousand times. <laughs> and I, every time I pick up, I'm like, I should just give these away. Right. That's what I did. I ended up. I, I, had, I haven't I had, moved it recently, but next time probably be that day. I had almost two thousand CDs, I think, at one point because I just have I'm a big music lover. I've always collected it, and I spent about two years digitizing it all. And then I had these giant boxes of just like, and I had even gotten rid of most of the cases for him. I just had these like books, you know, like CDs. And I ended up pulling all of the artwork out of them and making a mural, which I don't know if you guys can see this, but the wall behind me, that's a mural of all the covers from all the CDs that I have ever had. Oh, that's cool. And um, and then I got rid of all the CDs and all the cases, took them to Goodwill, dropped them off. <laughs> and it was like, yay, I have so much more space now. I just thought some. I just thought of something that I think everybody can relate to. I think most people have this problem: paint cans, finishes, yes, can, all that stuff, right? Yes. Why do I have twenty different colors of spray paint that I may never use again, or 
or lacquer or, or finish you know that all that stuff is just taking up too much room yeah. i just it's got to go it's got to go it's impossible in new york to throw like cans of paint it, like it's like you throw them in the garbage and you come home in the morning and <laughs> they're outside your front door again because the garbage men don't want paint cans to go there's like a process i don't even know what the process yeah. is but when dave and i do like a clean out and we end up with say like 10 gallons of paint like you know the gallon cans and we just literally like every time dave leaves i go just take a gallon can and just get rid of it somewhere in the city <laughs> it just like goes into the ether so over like 10 days they all they're all gone but if you try to get rid of 10 cans at once you know, it's like you're like trying to abduct somebody on the street. Like everyone will be like, you can't do that. You can't like you can't go to any building. And if you put them down in front of a building, the building, because they know that some kid's going to pop open the can and pour it on a car. It's like, you know, it's like, yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. Place, you can't put anything out that's going to like damage everyone's storefront. So yeah. places we like just Home throw Depot, them away one at a time. Places what? like Home Depot will have like once a year, they'll have like bring all your chemicals and, and paint cans and we'll just oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's I didn't know that. Yeah. I got, should... I'll come there with a truckload of <laughs> <laughs> all different colors, shades of white that are like half, <laughs> half, half dried. Yeah, I mean, like the the stain and paint thing is is really interesting because it's one of those like you spent money on it. It's a consumable, right? It's not like a tool that you're spending money on and it just sits there and you can reuse it a thousand times. And so, at least in my mind, it's like, well, I haven't fully used up. I haven't gotten my money's worth out of this can of paint if I've only used half of it or stain. And when we moved into this house, the guy that lived here before us, really nice guy, he never was like a woodworker or anything, but for some reason, he had about, I don't know, 50 different kinds of stain, different colors, every paint color in the entire house, like a full gallon of it, plus a bunch of other stuff that I don't know where it was from. And so I got in here and I was like, well, I, I mean, this stuff's perfectly good. i I don't want to just throw it away. Like I might end up using it at some point, but that was in addition to the collection that I already right. had. <laughs> right. So yeah, so I have tons of it and you maybe you'll see in my videos, I, I made a, a shelf that runs the length of my shop and it's up at the top. It's about a foot from the ceiling and it is covered end to end with cans of stain. <laughs> <laughs> and then like, there's one little area where I've got like some stuff that I actually use on a regular basis, but and, it's and just, even recently, you just said, I don't like staining my projects, right? I don't. I don't. I never, I, that that one is like the only, that's the only thing, only stain yeah. I've used in recent history. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know why I keep it either. But Once in a while, we end up with, you end up with like four or five cans that have like one inch at the bottom. And there have been more than a couple of times working together with Dave where we just pour them all together in one can. And then that's <laughs> the color the client wants. <laughs> it's like we have to like figure out. <laughs> we have to figure out how to like we always mark on it too like if we have like two cans of say like special dark walnut and you know uh whatever yako bean or whatever that's called we'll mix them together and we write on the can you know mixed because and then of course like you know it wears off and then you use it and then you're like oh i gotta go buy another hybrid can and we gotta try and make it there have been a couple times where i actually had to try and make it because we did that <laughs> really yeah but oh. i i try i i try my best to 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 leave things I'm not good at it but I try my best to leave things at the store like my dad is a huge collector of wood like he's like oh look look at this oak table I have it's a gorgeous oak table I'm going to take it all apart and use all the wood and when he says gorgeous he means the quality of the wood and uh, I always tell him I keep all my wood at the lumber yard it's always there it's always fresh and it's never <laughs> dirty when I need it it's got no nails in it and he's like look at this you want that it's a whole set of like pine shelves he goes all you got to do is pull the nails out I was like you know what Home Depot has a whole aisle full of beautiful pine. Yeah. I could buy the pine with no knots in it. I could buy the pine with the knots in it. I said, I keep all my wood. And then he'll like give me like a bucket with like 60,000 nuts. And I'm like, the chances I'm going to need three quarter inch bridge nuts in the next 10, you know, it's really unlike, unless I'm going to like make them into a dinosaur or something. So I always say, I keep my, I keep my whole nut selection at Home Depot. I fought for a long time about having a um, a sheet rack with you know so I could hold four by eight sheets of plywood, and I spent all this time trying to rearrange my shop and like all the stuff so that I could be able to keep these. And then I kind of came across that same idea, like, well, why do I need to keep? Yeah. If I have a if I buy a sheet of plywood, I should be buying it. it to use it to cut yeah. it up right away. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, I buy it in spurts, so yeah. like, and then it gets used up, and then I find like last week I found I have no good usable plywood, so I ordered you know thousand dollars worth of plywood to be delivered i have it delivered when i need it. yeah i think so. that's one of those things that like it's really easy to 
think you should store it because you think you need to have it on hand all the time, but it's it's really that's a huge waste of, of yeah. space. Yeah. Well, I pro- I probably talked about this last week, but uh, with my container, me and Willie built this. Uh, Willie's uh, the guy that helps me sometimes. We built this um, my hardwood library. I think I talked about it last week, mm-hmm. and you see it in this new video that's coming out on Core. And that's been a, a, a total life changer for me because the back of that container was just filled with piles of wood. And the giant piles of wood that were there, now all of a sudden are this like sparse little collection of wood in the air. It doesn't look like anything. Like piled on the ground, it's like 5,000 pounds of wood. So if I needed something, I can only select from the top. Right. But now it's totally usable and uh, I have to remove some wood from the basement now. It's all going straight up there. And again, it'll all be accessible. I can categorize it. It's It's been... Such a, a a great thing for me to do. So that, that wood library, if you have the space, is great. I, I was going to build the racks like you see on the walls typically. You see for the hardwoods, just like the steel bars that come out. Mm-hmm. But even that, I, I would just have piles of wood I couldn't access because if I needed the one at the bottom of five planks, I'd have to move five planks that are 16 feet long. So now I could just grab it by the end and just slide it all the way out. So I don't know if I talked about this or not, but and it, it's not quite the same thing, but it's the same idea. Um not for long things like that, like long pieces like you're talking about. But at one point, I, I had a bunch of slats from pallets that I'd pulled off, and I needed to be able to store them. I tried vertical storing at, on a cart at one point, and it got really in the way, and it was just hard to deal with. So then I eventually took um, maybe three or four pallets and stacked them vertically, stacked them on top of each other, and just used the runners to make a rack. And oh, so that's the, cool. The pallets are the rack. And so from the front, you have you know just these slots in between pallets that you can stack up different pieces of wood, and that's kind of oh, that's a way a, for me really to. And it's a like great idea. so easy, simple, quick. Yeah, simple. And then from the other side, so that's like in the the in between the pallets. From the other side, when you're looking down the length of a pallet in between the runners, you've got that slot right that that is inside the pallet. And so I use those for you know dowels and it's small pieces that would get lost mm-hmm. in like a big rack or something right. so any offcuts and and thin pieces trim pieces stuff like that slides in from the side so right. it goes That's in the great. corner it takes up the footprint of a pallet and it actually holds just tons and tons of you know four foot pieces of wood that's a it's a great solution for just like stacking short pieces yeah and it, it for in my case it fits under under the stairs because we have you know, the stairs go, they cut off the corner in one corner of my shop. And so it's like at four feet tall, you don't have a normal height anymore. So it's kind of an unusable space anyway. So I shoved this whole pallet structure down there and it makes it so I have a lot of storage in a place that otherwise I couldn't really use for much else. Mm-hmm. But what you said earlier about there being like a stack versus having it organized is a really interesting thing to think about you know, that you can effectively have the same amount of stuff in the same space and depending on how it's laid out makes it either usable or not usable. Yeah. And so if you can, maybe if you, like me, are overwhelmed with how much stuff you have in any given space, uh, restructuring it or making it easier to to access can maybe change like how you use the space or what you think it's capable of or, I don't know. Yeah, maybe purge. Not. Purging is... Uh, well, yeah, that's always good, too. It's always useful. Yeah, get rid of stuff. There's no doubt about it. Like today, I, I went through my plier drawer, and I threw away like 10 pair of pliers that are bent, chipped, snapped, broken. I was like, I have... In my plier drawer, I got 70 pairs of pliers, we- all different <laughs> end cutters, snippers. Because, you know, I'm such a junkie, I'll go to the garage sale and I'll buy a toolbox. And the guy <laughs> goes, oh, everything comes in it. And uh, I save every single thing that's in it. I'm like, all right, cool. Just throw them all in the same drawer. So the drawer is like literally topped off with pliers. <laughs> so if you were paring that down, would you pare that down to like one of each kind or just I the can. ones you like? I, I'm, I have a sickness. I can't do that. I'll get nervous <laughs> if I start throwing out the ones that are good. <laughs> so I get sweaty and nervous like having to make those decisions. I always just leave them in the drawer. I was like, you know what? Somebody will use these when I'm dead, when they clean out. <laughs> They'll yeah. use it to pull all the things off the wall. <laughs> no, I don't know. I just... I save them. I, I just save all like, you know, if it's good quality thing, I save it. And then like, for instance, if a friend's over and they're like, hey, can I have a pair of pliers? I go, hey, just take them. Don't bring them back. You know, you know I do that a lot. Here's what I did when um, 
this guy named Jay came over. He was from Texas and he was in the area and he came over to visit and I gave him a bunch of stuff. And I'm like, all right, so if you're going to take this, you have to take all of this too, right? Yeah, so, and it was like, like, it was like two like, um, sets of Forstner bits. I just got a brand new set of Forstner bits and it has everything I'm ever going to need. So I, I need to get rid of these older two sets. So he got them all and it might have missing pieces or whatever, but it's no it's longer my problem. So, <laughs> yeah. so enjoy that, Jay. It's like, would you like this or everything behind door number five? <laughs> but you have to take everything. You have everything. to take everything. Yeah. <laughs> Old fenders. We should bumpers. have a. We should have a, a collaborative like making it or making it garage sale, right? We oh just, man, would, yeah. I just, could have a great. I could have a killer garage. Sale. Oh, that'd be fun. Would you actually sell any of it, Jimmy? I, I would. I would. I would. I mean, like I, I'm. I go through my garage now and I'm just like, like, just like someone said it today. I think David, you said it, the, the space is more valuable than the tool that's taking up that space right now. So in my little garage upstate, which again, you'll see in this next video I do, I'm in the garage for a couple of minutes. It's just so jam packed with like garage sale finds and projects that are going to be a video. You know, that's another addiction I've developed. It's like every little doodad I buy is going to be a video. Just like the double bit ax. I bought that ax head a few years back and I was like, Oh, this will be a video. And, uh, but that happens five times a weekend when I go garage <laughs> sailing and flea marketing. And, uh, so yeah, it just, it, it keeps my brain thinking. Do you think when you get to the point where you move upstate, do you think you'll end up having a big garage sale or like a shop sale where you take out what you want and then have people in to just buy the rest of it? <laughs> oh, nice. people come. My brother Joseph and I had a purge. We, we had a giant space. This was before I was doing videos. This was in... From 95 to 2000, we had literally a 3,000 square foot street level garage. We were living the, the dream. Remember Vegas and Dantana? He had his car in his apartment, that whole thing. These shows predate both of you probably. This, uh, <laughs> this guy had his Corvette in his garage where his apartment was. He was like the coolest dude in Vegas. That was the life that my brother and I lived. We ha he, I had my antique Cadillac. He had his Corvette. And we worked in that space developing toys. We didn't have families and we didn't have houses. So all of our income was disposable. We just, as long as the business was paid for, everything else was just trying to play cool. And um, eventually we, we had to go bankrupt. And we just, once we made that decision that we had to like purge, we opened up the doors and we just shoved everything to the middle of this garage, which was really big. And we just said, everybody who walked by, take whatever you want. And within a couple of days, it was all gone. And we just literally gave it all away because we didn't have the time to sit there and negotiate with people. We had like a deadline. We had to be out by the end of the month. Hmm. And, uh, so we, you know, I've been through that where I just say, take it, take it, take it, take it. But yeah, a couple of years ago or a few years ago now, um, when I moved out of my old house into the house I'm at now, I had a garage sale, but it wasn't, it was like, it was a yard sale, but it wasn't like your normal yard sale where uh, I had a bunch of artists come over and sell their arts along. Like I had friends, they could bring stuff over and set up a table. So it was kind of oh, cool. like me getting rid of a bunch of my stuff and kind of like a, a party, like we're all drinking and people are selling their their art right in my front yard that's mm. fun yeah. yeah i would like to do something like that we have a lot of uh, a lot of our friends have kind of community yard sale sales where it'll be like you know three or four couples will bring stuff to one person's house that's in like mm -hmm. kind of a popular neighborhood for yard sales and yeah they a lot of stuff gets sold and things like that where you group a bunch of people together because i think People who are going to buy are more interested in going to one place where they can find mm -hmm. stuff from multiple families and stuff. So I guess yeah. I guess that's a good way to go about it if you're wanting to get rid of a bunch of stuff in your shop. But <clears throat> yeah, they have a my when well, my sister lives in Seacliff, Long Island. They have a community garage sale every year, and it was two three weeks ago. I missed it this year just because I just because of scheduling. But I typically go, and there's always cool stuff. And of course, I'm always looking for rusty steel stuff and tools, and which I always is, find stuff. Which is why you have. Drawers and drawers of flyers. Oh, yeah. You know, it's funny. The last time I went to that garage sale, I went to my sister's uh, community garage sale. And uh, this guy had tons of tools and everything was a dollar. Take this for So I bought, he had like seven little metal triangles. You know, the ones like the little framing squares that you keep in your back pocket when you're on a job. I bought all six, six or eight of them. I bought all of them. And so now they're all over the shop. Everywhere you look, there's one. Hmm. And then there's moments of time where there's none. Like mice. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's moments of time where they're all in the same spot. Like I don't know how it happens. Yeah. It's like <laughs> these framing squares. 
they'll have a mind of their own. Like even Taylor comes in from the welding station the other day. She's like, where are one of those T-squares? And they all have the dollar sticker on them. She goes, where is one of the dollar T-squares? <laughs> Triangles. I go, I don't know. And like I moved a few things around and one popped up. I saw two scurry into the corner. <laughs> <laughs> now, see, I have that exact same problem with tape measures and pencils. Oh, that's why I, that's why my tape measure never comes off my waist. Yeah, I actually that's did. I have one on my keys now because of you always carrying one around. And it actually is really handy. But yeah, the pencils, man, just, I don't know. They're the, genesis, the genesis of that, that concept was, of course, I could never find my, my ruler. So what I did is I went on Amazon and I bought 15 rulers. And I just put one on every corner of the shop. So everywhere yeah. there would always be one with a reach. And just like the, just like the the framing squares, they're all gone. Yeah. And then one day there's a pile of them under the sink, and then they're all gone. And then the next day there's like two of them over there, and then they're gone. And so I just said, if I just never allow it to leave my body, mm-hmm. it will always be with me. And maybe you have like maybe you have like a shop goblin that's like playing tricks on you. Yeah. No, it's just you know, I, like my eyes play tricks on me. I'll literally look at the table, and I will absolutely not see what it is I'm looking for. I turn around and I look back, and it's there as plain as day. I, I, it has something to do with the dyslexia that I was. I've always been le- learning disabled and every other thing that's supposed to be wrong with you as a kid. And uh, so I, I sometimes think that that's probably what it is. I'll literally look and like because my brain is like trying to solve some problem from like five hours ago. I'm looking at the table and I'm not seeing what I'm supposed to see because. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the engine's working on something different than what's in the front of my brain. And then I look back and I'm like, oh, it's right there. That's what mm. it's been. So that's why I, I – and then the other thing, you talk about pencils. I, every day I reluctantly, like, carve open a new pencil. And then when I finally, like, change my pants after, like, four days, I have 30 pencils in my front pocket. <laughs> that are all the way at the bottom of my front pocket that I didn't feel. Because right. I have 700 tools in my front pocket. So you guys know how there's, like, this this crazy, like – woodworking sticker thing going on like everybody who has uh, a saw has a sticker right let's instead of stickers let's start a new movement of pencils we should all get our own pencils and then send our pencils to everybody because i don't know what to do with all these stickers right but i do know what to do with a bunch of pencils right that's that's a good point in my front pocket (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah. uh jimmy's shop goblins have are currently eating his internet and we lost jimmy (laughs) He is trying to reconnect again. Oh, and having trouble. And having trouble. Um, what are you watching? Let's go with that. There's this channel. It's called Mod. M O D. Are you familiar with this? I'm not. Um, it, it this guy. It, I think it's only been around like a year, and he doesn't have like a crazy huge subscription. Let's see. Uh, what is what does he have? What does he have here? clicking some links he's got eighteen thousand youtube subscribers and it's a really cool channel where he's just kind of like he's just teaching you cool things and how to mod did some you things guys uh, realize them. that i've been dropped out yep yep we yes. have we have moved on without you <laughs> we're now in episode oh, 54 <laughs> and we left jimmy behind <laughs> there's something's wrong with my internet where it starts and stops lately in the last couple of days so I, I greatly apologize for no being problem. gone we just blamed it on the shop goblins that you have. So, uh, Jimmy, uh, since you since you left, we moved on to what we're watching, and I was telling everybody about this channel called Mod M O D, and this guy just teaches you cool cool little hacks and mods and, and little kits that you can make yourself, and he's got a really awesome camera mm-hmm. presence, and he also has got a great business model, and I think his channel is going to blow up. But every little mod that he sells, he has like little kits that you can buy to do it yourself. So you don't have to buy like a huge bag of nuts or bolts or something to do this this thing where you can just you can buy what you need. So it's it's just a real cool channel and that is called mod. I actually have seen that now that now that I look at it. And yeah, it, they are really well done. Yep. Very cool. Did uh did you go yet, Bob? No, no, go ahead. Oh, well, I just want to give uh, Chop with Chris a, a shout out. You guys uh, see Chop with Chris this week? He made a carving table. Yes. Chop with Chris just does all. He's, he's had a couple of uh, viral videos. And um, his channel is all about making things with just uh, razor, uh, just with axes and chisels and all non-electric hand tools. And uh, he's obviously very good at what he does. And he's got a good supply of tools and a good supply of stock. And it's just fun to watch him just do things like an old homesteader. And he gets some really good results. So chop with Chris. Check him out. Nice. Does he have that, uh, was it like a year ago where he made 
a like a dining room table and like yeah. Yeah. surprise his wife with it in a video. That was yeah. really awesome. And yeah. then prior to that, his other viral video, which I think kind of is his introduction to YouTube, was uh, he made the the lathe, the treadle powered lathe. Mm. Mm. Nice, awesome. Um, have I talked about uh, Colin Furs before? I don't. Uh, yeah. But I know who he is. He's, you know, he's I don't nice. know if I've I don't know if I've said that on here. But yeah, Colin Furs, British guy who I think at some point some magazine called him like the blue collar Tony Stark or something. To that. <laughs> yeah, is he? He just recently made the horse motorcycle. Yes. So yeah. he's he's <laughs> crazy. Nuts. He's insane. He's a lot of fun to watch. But he does a lot of welding projects where it's like, yeah. but it, but it's not even about the the process. It's not about the welding. It's not about the whatever. He's like. I should make a go kart that has a literally a jet engine on the back of it, uh-huh. and he does, and he does it like with propane cans and like, <laughs> you know, it, it's just he made um, uh, working Wolverine claws that shoot out from the sides of your arm, and yeah, and he, he made goes, he has so much fun with them too. He's just like runs around and they're like ejecting and rejecting back and forth off his knuckles. It's insane. Yeah, he's done magnetic boots where he can walk upside down on like a piece of metal. It, he's nuts, and he's, it's a he's lot crazy of fun. enthusiastic in his videos too. Like yeah, yeah, just, that's what's great about him. Yeah. yeah. So check out Colin Furs. He's he's good. Awesome. Um, cool. Eventually, well, we're gonna have to get to the point where we have a a wiki of. Of the of all the stuff like things we've talked about and mm. yeah so, so yeah. anybody out there looking to be an intern <laughs> in the intern send, send resumes too actually I don't know if I talked about this with you guys but uh, one of my high school students uh, elected to do that he he contacted me and said hey do you mind if I do a database on all your YouTube videos he oh, wants wow. to try he wants to he wants the practice of building a database and since he's fond of my videos he he asked if he would do it if if I would allow him to do it I said of course you want to. <laughs> Go through that trouble, please go for it. Huh. <laughs> so yeah. you'll be able to like do like a Boolean search, like Sander, hand plane, and you know all those videos will, you know, whatever ones that apply. He's going to figure out how to make that work. Nice. So it should be interesting. Wow, that's pretty cool. That, yeah. hmm, that's an interesting idea. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna have to think on that a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, uh, I guess that'll do it for it for this week. Uh, thanks to Luis Gomez. Jeremy Paulin, Jeremy White, and Juan Vargas. Those are our top uh, patrons from Patreon. And also thanks to everybody from Patreon. You guys are awesome, as always. Um, Thanks to Inventables for sponsoring this episode. And I guess we will see you guys back next week. Thank Thank you. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Later.